I think the reason Jesus puts these together is to remind us, even when we carry heavy burdens, you can still look good while you do it. <laughs> Lean in, child of God. I know you're going through. I know you got some heavy stuff in your life, but pull yourself together. Look. Wash your face. Make sure you're eating, because sometimes you can get so, sometimes you can get so heavy in your burdens that Matthew chapter 21, beginning at verse 1 and reading down to verse 9, we find what is biblically categorized as the triumphal entry. It sets the foundation for what we celebrate as Palm Sunday. Matthew chapter 21, beginning at verse 1 and reading to verse 9. Have you found it? Is there a word there? Oh, y'all say that like y'all mean it today. Uh, To God be the glory, there's always a word. This is what it says. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a coat with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a coat, the fold of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They bought the donkey and the coat and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut down palm branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And verse 9 said, And the crowds went ahead of him and that followed him and were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Hmm. Circle back in that. Verse 7. And they brought the donkey and the coat and put their cloaks on them and sat, and he sat on them. I want to preach you this subject of thought in our minds today. Who invited the donkey? Who invited the donkey? Hey, Roy, see if you can slide the words down a little bit so you can see my donkey there. Who invited the donkey? All right, listen. I need y'all to, I need y'all to pay attention. From the outset of this, I, I need to teach you something, okay? You can write it down if you want to. You can record it, whatever. But I need you to remember this. All right, you ready? All right, red fish, blue fish, green fish, swiss fish. I need y'all to remember this. Red fish, blue fish, green fish, swiss fish. All right, I'm going to say it a third time. I need y'all to remember this. Red fish. Blue fish, green fish, swish fish. All right, now let me begin. Have you ever been in the awkward scenario where somebody shows up that was not invited to show up? Have you ever been in an awkward scenario where you have invited people to a party and people are coming, they're arriving, the music is playing, the hors d'oeuvres are sitting out. If you're fancy, you got that charcuterie board. Y'all don't know what, it's all good. I just found out what it was like a year ago myself. That's just fancy meats and cheeses, y'all. That little charcuterie board out. 
You're hearing the doorbell ring, you're going and you're letting people in. Doorbell rings and you go and open it and lo and behold, somebody has showed up that is not supposed to be there. Isn't it awkward? Isn't it a little strange? Now, I know for some of y'all, you're like, no, it's not awkward at all for me. I just close the door right in their face. <laughs> Have you ever been somewhere in something and it felt like maybe you were the one that was a little out of place? Perhaps you got the invite by mistake but it's too late now because you're here. So too is the plight of this Palm Sunday. If y'all let me back up for a moment and build my case that we might we might see what the blessing is in, in this sermon today of who invited the donkey. This is what we find out by the time we get to Matthew chapter 21. Our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ, has been in ministry for three years. For three years, he's been in ministry. He has been baptized. He has healed the sick. He has enabled the blind to see, the, the lame to walk, the, the people with leprosy to be made whole again. He has walked on water. He has fed thousands with, with just a few loaves of bread and, and just a couple of pieces of fish. He has preached sermons on the mount where he would say things like, blessed are, are the meek, blessed are the poor. He has been busy in ministry, and now it comes this third time that he will come into Jerusalem for what will be the last time. It is a significant moment, and I want you to understand what is happening in Jerusalem right now. Jesus is arriving at a time in Jerusalem called the Feast of the Passover. The Feast of the Passover is when all Hebrews, those that were the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, are coming back to Jerusalem to celebrate and commemorate the time when they were still slaves in Egypt. And when they put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost of their home, when the death angel came through Egypt, if your house was covered by the blood of the lamb, death would pass you over. I'm going to be circling back to that for, for, for a sermon series in, in a little while called uh, Touch But Not Taken. I can't wait to get there. But, 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 but before I do, and every year since the exodus of God's people, they would gather and celebrate when God delivered them through the blood of the Lamb and death would pass over, this festival was called the Feast of the Passover. And Hebrews and Israelites would descend on Jerusalem in mass, even more than people that show up for the A&T homecoming. I mean, they would show up in mass. Hundreds of thousands of people will come to Jerusalem, and Jesus is in the midst because he's Hebrew. He celebrates the feast of the Passover, and he also knows that he has to go there to fulfill prophecy. The town is full of people. It is full of energy. It is full of religious fervor. There are Roman soldiers that are marching up and down the streets to make sure that nothing gets out of hand. Y'all still walking with me? I tell you all the time, you can't shout till you know what you're shouting about. So here are all of these Hebrews, here are all of these God believers that have ascended on Jerusalem. There are Roman soldiers that are all over the city making sure that law and order stays in place. So they were worried you get too many of them together, they're going to tear something up. Sound like some of y'all family, yeah? And while these streets are busy, while everybody is coming to Jerusalem, for this feast of Passovers. This is what Matthew 21 says, that before Jesus enters into the city, he stops at a place called Bethpage. And his Bethpage is near a place called the Mount of Olives. And he tells his disciples, baby, just help me preach, and he tells his disciples, he tells his disciples, to go into a nearby village. There you will find a colt and a donkey. Now, the reason Jesus tells them to go find the cult is because in antiquity, history shows us that when the king was coming triumphantly back into the city, 
the king would ride a majestic stallion. And this majestic stallion is the coat that Jesus said, go get. Go get a majestic stallion. A stallion was a majestic male horse. A mare is a female horse. A stallion is a male horse, which makes Meg the stallion name a little... Because it's... Because a stallion is a male horse. A stallion is a male horse. It's a regal male horse. Meg the... I digress. I digress. I digress. So Jesus tells his disciples, go get the colt, the stallion, the, the horse that I will ride into Jerusalem triumphantly on. But why is the, but why is the donkey there? I get why you said go get the colt. But it's a little confusing why you want to include the donkey. Are y'all still walking with me here? And this is what he says. When you go get the coat and the donkey, there is going to come opposition that does not want you to fulfill the purpose that I gave you. See, here, here's a reminder for all of us. That just because you got God's purpose don't mean that there won't be opposition in order for you to fulfill what Jesus said do. But Jesus says, when you get the opposition, just remember what I told you to say. All right, test time. Red, Jesus knew the test was coming before they did. So he didn't wait for the test to give them the answers for the test. He gave them the answers for the test before they got to the test. I knew a test was coming, so I gave you the answers to the test before you got to the test. The way God works in our life, he does not have to wait until you get to the test to give you the answers. He gives you the answers before you ever get to the test. I wish I had some help in here. Somewhere, he says, if you want to understand how to face the opposition to your purpose, the only thing you got to do is remember the word I already gave you. <laughs> My brother and sister, I want Jesus knew the answer to the test before the disciples ever knew there would even be a test, which means he prepared them for the test before they ever got to the test. You need to know the Word of God because when you know the Word of God, you know the answer to the test before you even get. You can say to yourself, I remember what I learned before I got in this. I remember what I learned before I had to face this. Know God's Word. It's the answer. The answer is in His Word. There is power in His Word. Learn it. Get the Scripture in your heart. And I believe everybody ought to have at least one Scripture that they can pull on when hell hits their life because it is the answer to the test before you got in the test. All right? But they that wait. I wish I had some Bible readers in here. Upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Yo, I, I love God's word. I, I, how about this one? I would have fainted, lest I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Okay, y'all not familiar with that one, no. Okay, uh, God said, I have plans for you. Plans to prosper you. Uh, 
See, you already have the answer to the test before you get in the test. Uh, uh, Paul said, I love this. And Paul said, I asked the Lord three times. Three times, take this from me, God. Don't, don't let me go through this, God. Do you remember God's answer? See, I don't have any Bible readers in here. God's answer was, my grace is sufficient for you. I want you to understand, before you get in any test, God has already given you the answers. I will face opposition, just like the disciples face opposition, but I will face it with the power of God's Word. So they go. They get the coat. They get the donkey. The Bible says that they, they, uh, the disciples make makeshift sha saddles on the coat and on the donkey. They are beginning the celebration, and this is how Jesus will come into the city because remember, historically speaking, the king comes riding into the city on a coat, a stallion. But it still begs the question, who invited the donkey? And if you read the scripture, which I know you will, you are astute Christians, it says that the donkey did not ride behind them. It said Jesus sat on both. So not only has he been invited to the party, he's a special guest. This is what I believe part of it means. Even though the donkey seems out of place because the coat is royal and regal. It is, it is nice looking and well put together. The donkey is a beast of burden. It knows how to carry a lot. And here is Jesus coming in with an animal that is known for looking good an animal that is known for carrying heavy burdens. Uh, with an animal that is known for looking good, an animal that is known for carrying heavy burdens. Here comes Jesus riding with an animal that's known for looking good and another animal that's known for carrying heavy burdens. I think the reason Jesus puts these together is to remind us even when we carry heavy burdens, you can still look good while you do it. Lean in, child of God. I know you're going through. I know you got some heavy stuff in your life, but pull yourself together. Look. Wash your face. Make sure you're eating, because sometimes you can get so, sometimes you can get so heavy in your burdens that you forget to eat, or you can do the opposite. You're heavy in your burdens, so you're, Here is, the, here is the interesting dichotomy here that Jesus shows us that even when you are carrying heavy burdens, you can still carry yourself with royalty. Hey, I, I know you're heartbroken, but pull yourself together. I know you got issues going on in your life, but pull yourself together. I know that there are things that are heavy and are pressing down on your life, but pull yourself together. You know, oftentimes what happens, what happens when we are sad, we start disconnecting ourselves from things. As we disconnect ourselves from things, we also disconnect ourselves from self-care. And not only do I want to make sure that while you are carrying your heavy burdens that you don't abandon your self-care, I want you to make sure you don't abandon your soul care. Yeah, wash your weed. Can you wash your weed? Is that a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you could wash it. Yeah, wash it. You don't roll out of bed long enough. It's four o'clock in there. It's four o'clock in the afternoon. Take the bonnet off. Pull yourself together. Pull yourself together. Pull yourself together. 
Because just because you are carrying burdens don't mean you have to fall apart. <laughs> Who invited the donkey? Jesus is now on the colt and donkey. And as he's on his colt and donkey, a celebration breaks out. Why? Because the king is coming. And as the king comes, this is a rare moment, a rare glimpse through the windows of time and antiquity where we get to see our Lord and Savior celebrate. He celebrates. This is a moment of repose. It's a good day. It's a good day, and Jesus celebrates. It's, it's like a good summer day. An ice cream truck, music is playing. People got their windows down, playing their music too loud. <laughs> you got your window down. Well, y'all probably don't have your window down. Y'all bougie. Y'all got the air conditioning on. But, you know, you got the <laughs> wind in your hair or scalp, whatever you're dealing with. <laughs> you just clean your ride. Wheels are shiny. Y'all, it's a good like a good summer spring day where you're just out rolling, enjoying the day. Jesus is out on this good day. They are celebrating. It is a rare moment where you don't get to see Jesus dealing with any of his issues. He just celebrates. And make no mistake about it, while they are waving their palms, while they are celebrating, this does not mean that Jesus does not have any serious stuff that he still has to deal with. Jesus still got pressing issues while people are shouting Hosanna, while people are waving their palms, while people are celebrating. Jesus still knows he has some pressing issues that still lie ahead of him. He knows he got some rough days ahead of him. He knows he still has to deal with. He knows he has some Pharisees he still has to deal with. He has Sadducees he still has to deal with. He has scribes that he still has to deal with. He has nails that will be in his hands, nails that will be in his feet. He's going to be beaten and whipped. He has thorns that are ahead of him. He has people talking ahead of him. He has people lying ahead of him. He has people gossiping ahead of him. But in this moment, he allows himself to celebrate. What he faces will not be easy. But in this moment, he allows himself to celebrate. Lean in, child of God. Uh, some of y'all got some issues pressing. You know you got some issues pressing when you leave here. You know you got some issues pressing on tomorrow when you get to work. You know you got some health issues that you got to go see the doctor about. But in this moment, <laughs> see, you got to learn how to celebrate even when you know you got some issues you still got to deal with. No, y'all. Y'all ain't walk with me today. You still got to know how to give God glory even when you know you got storms in your forecast. Yeah. You still have to know how to give God glory even when you know you got some hell waiting on you later on because I still got a reason to tell God thank you. Okay, all right, y'all. Y'all y'all not walk with me? Okay. Jesus know he got nails. Jesus know he got Pharisees. Jesus know he got Sadducees in his future. He know he got scribes in his future. He know he got thorns in his future. But he also knows he got a cross in his future. He know he got a crown in his future. He know he got a stone that's going to be moved in his future. He know he has victory in his future. So even though I know I have some issues in my future, I also know I got victory in my future. And is there anybody in here? Yeah, y'all, I don't think y'all walking with me here. Some of us can get so singularly focused on the fact that we got issues in front of us that we forget I also got victory in my future too. Yeah, okay, okay, all right. So yes, I got some trials in my future, but I got some triumph in my future too. Y'all, yeah, I better say that one more time. So, yes, I have some trials in my future, but yes, I got some triumph in my future, too. 
Yes, I have some, mir some, some mess in my future, but yes, I got some miracles in my future too. And I got to give God glory. Do you know how many opportunities you have to be happy, to be joyful, to give God thanks, but we don't take the moment that we have because we focus on the issues we still got to deal with. Jesus in this moment understands everything that lies ahead of him. But he still take a moment to celebrate God. And we got to acknowledge, yes, I got all that stuff ahead of me. But I'm going to still take time to tell God thank you. So here's Jesus riding this colt. And who invited this donkey? There he is, right there, invited by Jesus himself to fulfill prophecy. And this is what it says. It says that the people, seeing Jesus coming in on the coat and the donkey, they began to lay down, lay down the, the, the coats. Because some people had some extra, and they laid down the coat. Some had some palms. Laid down the palms. Because remember, when the king is coming, you roll out the red carpet. But here's, here's the problem. They don't have a red carpet. So some people say, oh, I don't have a red carpet. Since I don't have a red carpet, let me take my coat and lay down my coat. Instead of saying, I don't have a red carpet, so I can't do anything. Some people looked at those people and said, I don't have a red carpet and I don't have a coat. But I know how to climb this tree. I have any tree climbers in here where y'all were young. Yeah, I used to love to climb a tree. They, they said, I don't have a carpet, I don't have a coat, but I can climb this tree, and I can pull down this branch, and I can do what I can do. I may not be able to do what you do, but I can do what I can do. I may not be able to do what you did, but I can do what I can do. Uh, lean in. Lean, lean, lean in, child of God. Uh, you were born an original. Don't die a copy. Y'all didn't, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't, you were born an original. Don't die a copy. You may not have what somebody else has to be able to do what they do, but you do what God has gifted you to do. Because when you do that, because when you do that, you acknowledge that what God made me is enough. When you do that, you acknowledge that what God made me is enough. So have your own mind. Have your own mind. Social media is going to tell all of us how to think and do and move. Have your own mind. Have your own look. Have your own style. It's, it's all right if your hair don't look like they hair. It's all right if your beard can't quite. You got kind of a struggle beard. I, I've been growing my beard. I've only been growing my beard for a little while, just, just for about four years. But I mean, <laughs> but, it's, but it's mine. But it's mine. <laughs> Have your own praise. Have your own testimony. Have your own shout. Have your own dance. Have your own prayer. I may not have a red carpet to roll out, but God still gave me something that's worth having. And, and lastly, and lastly, my brother and sister, uh, it also shows us when they lay down their coat and they lay down their branches, even though they didn't have a red carpet, to know how to use what you have. To know how to use what you have. I had a, I had a sad day, y'all. I had a sad day. I mean, it wasn't sad for real, but I had a sad day. I needed to, I needed to make a sandwich. <laughs> it was about 12 o'clock at night. I needed to make a sandwich. 
Y'all going to judge me for this. I, I, I already feel it. I already feel it. <laughs> I went to the bread. <laughs> I had everything I need. I went to the bread. All that was left in there. I told you, y'all, you see, y'all, y'all, y'all judging me already. That's what I'm saying. I ain't even, I ain't even told you what happened yet. I ain't. It wasn't nothing but the earpieces, y'all. It wasn't nothing but the earpieces. I, now, I'm like, who left the earpieces? Like, you could have. And at the same time, at the same time, it was. I mean, I mean, I needed to, I needed to make my sandwich, Sister Glossy. You understand? I, sometimes you may not have what you want. But I serve a God then always make sure you have at least what you need. <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah, I, I love y'all. Y'all gonna leave me be like, yeah, my pastor pe- preached about the two end pieces of bread. Yes, I did. Listen, listen. Some of us will miss our blessing because we are looking at what God has gave us. And we are concluding that it's not enough. But here's what the lesson of the text is. If I don't have a red carpet, I got a coat. If I don't have a coat, I got a branch. If I don't have a branch, I got my voice. So when the Lord woke you up this morning, He equips you with everything that you need. All you got to do is acknowledge, God, I thank you for the branches. God, I thank you for my voice because I believe that you gave me everything I need for this day for this victory, for this breakthrough, for this change. And is there anybody in here, is there anybody in here that can say I would trust in the Lord to the day? Everybody stand to your feet. Everybody stand to your feet. Everybody stand to your feet. I have... I will have and use what God has given me as my king approaches for celebration. I thank God that he allowed the donkey to be a part of the celebration. Even if it is out of place, you know what that reminds us? That all of us are welcome and invited to come to the Lord. Every last one of us, every last one of us are invited to come to the Lord. And my brother and my sister, if your soul is not saved, you got an invitation, you got a personal invitation from the Lord, our Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. You are invited to salvation. Yes, you are. You are invited to salvation. Yes, you are, my brother. You are invited to salvation. He wants to save your soul. If you would just trust him on today. He knocks on the door of your heart. And as he knocks on the door of your heart, the only thing that he asks you to do is just accept him as your Savior. And will you accept him? If your soul isn't saved, I know he's knocking. I know he's knocking, my brother. If your soul isn't saved, I know he's knocking, my sister. Will you trust him enough to give your life to him? Will you come today? Will you come today and be saved? 
Will you come today and let, and let God save your soul? Will you come today and let Jesus be your Savior? Will you come from the balcony to the lower level? Will you come and accept Jesus as your Savior as he knocks on the door of your heart? And if you're saying to yourself, I hear him knocking. I hear him knocking, Stackhouse, but, but I don't know what's going to happen after I, after I hear him. I'll tell you what's going to happen. You're going to take a step towards his way. And every step you take is going to feel better and better since you laid your burdens down. This is not a walk of perfection. You're not saying to yourself, all right, excuse me, neighbor. I got an appointment to keep with the Lord. It's time for me to go be perfect. That's not what salvation is about. Salvation is about accepting Jesus as your personal Savior, letting him be your God and your guide. And if your soul is not saved, we invite you. We invite you to come and give your life to Christ. When you get here, these preachers don't want to get in your background, ask your business. They just want to celebrate with you and pray the prayer of salvation. It is too easy and too important to let this moment pass you by. Will you come today? Will you come? And if your soul is already saved, but you're here without a church home, we invite you to join Lewis Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. One church in three locations. We'll sing while you make your heart up. You ought to come today. You ought to come today. Y'all know, y'all know this was coming. You knew this was coming. I need you to help me to help me. Do you understand that when you woke up this morning, that it could be in God's own divine will and providence that he placed you right where you are because there's somebody on your left, your right, in front of you or behind you that is on the verge of giving their life to Christ or joining God's church. And could you help me to help them? This is all I need you to do. Just turn to somebody and ask them, do we need to go down? Come on, come on, turn and find somebody and ask them, do we need to go? Do we need to go down? Do we need to go down? Do we need to go? I don't want you to miss. I don't want you to miss what God is calling you into. Do we need to go down? Do we need to go down, my brother? Do we need to go down, my sister? Do we need to go down? Do you need to give your life to Christ? Then come on, let's go. Do you need to join God's church? All right, then come on. Let's go. Pastor 